And so it begins. 20 brilliant minds hand-picked based on their ability to outshine their competition. They will battle it out to become Costa Monster's next diamond. This is the Diamond TV Presenter Search. Contestants, it's good to see you again and welcome back to the Diamond TV Presenter Search. We start this week's challenge with a very exciting task. Remember that in this competition, we are looking for your innovation, your creativity, discipline and hard work. This week's challenge is all about teamwork. You will be divided into groups of two and thereafter Jonah will explain in detail what exactly this week's task is all about. You will be required to come up with a television show that is extremely exciting and creative to be judged on the ratings of how the audience loves this TV show. Jonah? Your TV show contestants is one that has to embody a real TV entertainment. We expect from you, as stated, innovation, creativity and discipline. You will be judged based on your teamwork. Both teams are expected to choose a director who will be the lead of this production and you will assign roles on who will be members of the cast and crew, meaning you decide who produces, who scripts and who presents this show. This show has to be a real life TV show that will impress the audience to say everything that has to be in it must be authentic and valid. Thank you. Those instructions are clear. And like I said, my right hand man will always be the fly on the wall and my eyes to see whether that teamwork is truly being demonstrated. Here are the teams will call you out and you can step in front Team two, Grace Mukamba, where are you? Team two, also Chiambi. Innocent, you join team two. Elasani, you go to team one. Justin, you join team one. Pezzo, you are in team one as well. Esther, you join team two. Nomlanga, you join team one. George is in team two. Mercy, you join team one. Koso, you join team two. Grace Skanda joins team two. So two groups of 10, remember, that this task is all about teamwork. We are looking for innovation, creativity, discipline, and hard work. We put you to the test. Two of you will be eliminated and will be on the chopping block. 18 of you will remain. And remember, like I said, this competition is very personal to me as it's Thara, and I'm looking for somebody to join the Diamond TV family, somebody who will be mentored by myself and Jonah, and somebody who will one day be able to take over from me and join the Diamond TV family. Contestants, good luck. I hope you're up for this task. Mm. <laughs> How do I feel about having made it this far? I feel great. I feel really great. I had amazing teammates, uh, great team leaders, so I really feel great about being, having gone this far. I've got mixed emotions. Nonetheless, I'm very happy to have made it this far in the competition because obviously there are some who didn't even make it past the first auditions. Having made it this far in the competition is very exciting. It simply tells me to say, I have what it takes and so I think it's been, it's been a good thing, it's been a good journey so far. The task is pretty simple. The two teams have to come up with a real life television show that will rope in high numbers and engaged viewership. The goal for each contestant still remains to put up their best to ensure that they secure their place in the competition. The person that helped me out the most in our team was um, Rose. Rose really helped me out um, in terms of presenting. I'd say maybe Rose, Chia, everyone, but everyone did help, but uh, I'd say Rose, Chiambi, uh, our team director, and um, Kotso, yeah. They really helped put me in line and know, helped me know what it is I was doing exactly, so yeah. After the break, Costa Monza has got a surprise that will help the teams execute their task effectively. Top 20 have been divided into two teams. 
each team should come up with an engaging TV show with high viewership. This assignment is aimed at seeing how well these strangers can work together as a team. And to aid the contestants, Costa Monster has a special guest. Contestants, it's good to see you once again and welcome back to our competition of the Diamond TV Presenter Search for 2022. Today, I introduce a special guest in a colleague in the industry and a brother who I'm very proud of, David Kazadi, a filmmaker a cinematographer but he likes calling himself a storyteller he's got his name to films like the black dollar that show on dstv's showmax he also is behind the production the divorce club as well as something soon to come called bank and robbers david is also a nominee at the africa magic viewers choice awards congratulations on that nomination thank david. you very much thank you very much David has got a wealth of experience and believe you me, as he mentors you today, you will be having a wealth of knowledge imparted into you. Ask all the important questions and enjoy this rare once in a lifetime interaction. David, these are the 20 finalists who were chosen out of the over 300 that auditioned for this year's Diamond TV Presenter Search. Out of these, we are looking for the gem that will be polished into a diamond and will be a presenter and be part of the Diamond TV family. Thank you for coming, and David will be joining you in a short while. The realities of life are as follows. Your talent can take you places where your character can't keep you. You can quote that. Yeah, that was good, right? You can tweet that. <laughs> I'll repeat that again. Your talent can take you places where your character won't be able to keep you. Now, I say this to every single person that I meet for the first time in this industry because it's, it's as real as it gets. This industry will lift you up, spit you out, stamp on you, but what will keep you sustained is your character. Does that make sense? So you could be as talented as you want to be. You could be the next Oprah, okay? Who's Oprah? Someone's called Oprah. That's you, yeah? Yeah, so close. You could be the next Oprah. But if your character is beep, it's not going to work for you. It's not going to work. And that's, point, that's purely because we work in, the in, in an industry that deals with people. The cameraman, the lighting person, the sound man, the newscaster, those are what? Say it with me. People. They are people. It's now time to get to work. Each team is given an opportunity to create their own production from scratch. With an entire crew at their fingertips, they have everything they need to execute their ideas. Each team assigned a team leader they felt would coordinate their production. These team leaders will now present their finished productions to Costa and Jonah. The least impressive team risks its members going up for elimination. So, the teams or the contestants were divided into two, Jonah, and uh, obviously the task that was given was for them to produce a TV show with high ratings. The task and the theme for this assignment was obviously teamwork. You saw through with the teams. Are they ready with the presentations? I think they are ready. It's uh, up to the teams to show us what they've done so far and uh, Musonda is here from team one yes thank you. hi Musonda hello tell us what you have we our show is called fiance new loco uh, when we sat down with the team uh, we decided that we wanted to do different parts because we have different interests we're given a short amount of time and in that short amount of time i thought the best way would be to showcase zambia in the best light uh, Zambia can be seen as having a lot of difficulties and challenges, but we thought, why not show what we have and what we're proud of? Let's see what you have. Hello and welcome.
welcome to Fiance Ni Loco, a show that brings you the very best of Zambia. From fashion, culture, technology, name it, we have it all. I am your host, Nova Mandla. And I'm Cosmos Chongo Mulenga. And on today's show, we have an exciting lineup just for you. Technology has taken over. In fact, economy is mostly dependent on how advanced technology is as a country. Well, we are going to hear more on the insight from Pezo and Ntalasha. Youths today have stepped up and they've brought us new technology in the health sector. And we are glad to have our guest today who is going to review to us the innovations that they've brought to the health sector. That's right, Nomalanga, and it seems the COVID-19 pandemic opened a window for these innovations to come into play. The health sector, as you have mentioned, wasn't left out because one of the innovations that was invented in the health sector is the period comforter. Well, with us in the studio, we have the innovator of the period comforter. Yes, she's 19 years old. You heard me right. Her name is Ritiana Piri. Welcome, Ritiana. Thank you very much, Nomalanga. Well, Ritiana, tell me. What exactly inspired your innovation? Uh, first of all, I'd say my experience with pain, menstrual pain. Um, I have very severe pains. And also I observed um, that a lot of girls and women become less active when they're having their menstruation. It is indeed very interesting. We thank you viewers for being with us in our health segment. And indeed, with me, your host, Nomalanga Moyo. And Opa Banda, it's back to Cosmos. And Nova. You actually look amazing. Thank you so much. And I must commend women for the work that they have been doing. They have played a major role in making Zambian fashion go worldwide. And this time we are going to hear more on Fualako with Justin and Musonda. Over the last 10 years, Zambia has made its mark in the fashion industry. Our creative style and innovation has made us renowned the world over. And I'm your host, Justin Malenga. And I'm Usonda Chizinga. Today on Fualoko, we are here with Lace by Mwengs, a designer that has reinvented traditional wear with style and chic. An amazing designer, and you can tell by the outfits we're wearing. So we're going to go in and check it out. Come along. We're here with Beverly from Lace by Wangs in the studio where fabric is put together to make the most unique of outfits. And you can come through to the shop. It's, it's so amazing how we can express our culture with what we wear. And even with what we eat. To the viewers out there, you will agree with me that food definitely does bring us together. And crossing over to the studio with Messi and Elephant. Zambian food has so much to tell about our history and our roots. My name is Mercy. And I am Elisani. And indeed, Mercy food is culture, and we need to listen to it. Now, on set today, we are joined by the winner of Chef Zambia, actually, season two. She is Chef mm. Womba, and she uses naturally grown ingredients to come up with extraordinary dishes. Welcome on set. Glad to have you. Thank you so much for having me. Let's dig right into this interview just like we dig into the food. Chef Womba, tell us, where did your passion for food come from? I started cooking at the age of eight. Um, oh. That was when I made my first cake. And I had been basically grown up, just growing up in a family of cooks and chefs as well. My mom was a very good cook, so I learned a lot of what I know from her. Now, Womba is also, believe you me, a physiotherapist, trained physiotherapist. Wow. Now, I'm sitting here and thinking, physiotherapy and chefing, like the drastic change. How did that come about? Tell us more about that. So, believe it or not, when I started my physiotherapy, I didn't think I would go into cooking full time. Okay. So it was something that I did part time a lot. And during my studies, I saw myself veering towards the, the culinary world because I believe um, food is God's love made edible. Mm -hmm. It's one thing that brings people together a lot. When you think of food, you think of family, you think of unity, you think of love. Yeah. So I try to resonate my food and my recipes, my cooking to inspire people to just bring them closer to what um, what God is, and that's what love is, basically. Thank you so much for coming on to the show, Chef Womba. Thank it has you. been an honor having you here. Mm -hmm. I must say again, I am inspired. Thank you so much for having me. It's been great. Thank you. <laughs> we have 
really enjoyed our time with Chef Womba. And from what we have learned, I really hope Mercy will learn one or two things because I wanted to be doing this magic after we get married. <laughs> Don't shoot your shot on TV. <laughs> but as the saying goes, man, the quickest way to a man's heart is through his stomach, so. Actually, the only <laughs> way to everybody's heart is through food because we all love food. Mm -hmm. We take it back to the studio. Thank you so much, Nessie and Elisani. I am definitely getting myself those pickles. I'm such a foodie, so I definitely want to try that out. And with that being said, we have come to the end of the show. Thank you so much for joining us today on Fiance Ni Loco, a show that brings you diversity, culture, and everything Zambian. And also be sure to catch us next time as we explore the Zambian natural phenomena. Until next time, it's me, Cosmos Chongo Mulenga. And I am Nova Mandler. See you next time on Fiance Ni Loco. Thank you so much, uh, Chizinga, from uh, Team One, I, I, I believe. And you've now come up with uh, the name for your team. It's called Aces? Aces, yes. I believe. Um, you are the team lead and obviously will definitely need to give feedback to the entire you know, cast and, and crew. But um, so much I have to say about uh, what I've seen. Um, but that feedback will be given later. So Jonah, we're done with uh, Tim Aces, and like I said, uh, we'll be able to give the feedback once we see what the next team has. Um, who do you have for us? Koto, welcome. Thank you. You are team two. Yes. What are you calling your team? Team Ticheze. Team Ticheze. Yes. What is the name of the show? Our show is Iliashi Pansaka. Tell us about it, what should we expect? Well, we focused on the modern and traditional aspects of lifestyle and the title basically stems around the culture that we have as a country and as a people in which we would sit and tell stories as children with our elderly people in which wisdom was shared and knowledge was shared and that's something that we wanted to bring into the show to bridge about to bring about um, the gap between the elderly generation and the younger generation, hence the title. Well, I can't wait to see what you have presented. Can, can we watch? Let's see. Okay. This means that whatever you do in the dark will come to light one day. This unravels itself as we talk about one of Zambia's most controversial yet talked about living arrangements, cohabitation. Exactly, marriage before marriage. Now this is a common practice that we are seeing in our modern society and show we are going to be sharing more light on that. My name is Grace Mukamber. And my name is Innocent Chapel, and you are watching Iliashi Pansaka. Exactly, now this is a lifestyle show that brings to you the modern Zambian traditional practices and the touch of what's trending. That's right. We talk about everything Zambian and see how we can bring issues to light that needs to be brought out into the limelight. Now, before I get into it, I would very much like to know your vibe because this whole topic of cohabitation, <laughs> I know. Okay, I know. So having grown up in a Christian um, home and of course my parents being strictly tradition, yeah, yeah, they yeah. actually prohibit cohabiting before you get married. They believe in doing things the right way at the right time. I actually agree with them because cohabitation for me just doesn't doesn't make sense. I mean, you can get into something without knowing the repercussions and how to handle certain situations once faced with them. A hundred percent. And so still to come on the show, we are going to be having a special guest who's going to shed more light on what cohabiting is and of course what her views are on the subject matter. With that said, we'll take a, a commercial break. Catch us when we're back. Welcome to Hashtag What's Trending right here on Iliashi Pansaka. It's your girl ZNSZ here to bring you nothing but the backs of the latest trends and what everybody's talking about. It's a part of the show where we get to tell you what everybody's talking about, but here is where you get the legit, legit information. I mean, if you didn't hear it from us, well, it's probably not true. Really kidding right there. <laughs> All right, first up on the show is a story that is making rounds on social media right now. Yes, everybody is talking about 
that amazing show that Rima had recently. They're talking about it because it is a do-over because um, his initial show was actually a bust and when he arrived, he arrived hours late for the show. And so later on, he announced in his Twitter saying that there's gonna be a do-over show and 500 of the people that are going to arrive first, it's gonna be for free. So after that, after the whole free show, everybody's liking it, everybody's happy, and they're really waiting to see more from him. They even gave him a name saying he's Rema Banda, which has a very nice ring to it. I'm really gonna say that for real. <laughs> All right, that's all the time that we had for you right here on Hashtag What's Trending on Ilya Shipansaka. Next up, we're going to be going to the world on the street with Hope. Thank you. They say true love is hard to come by, but when it does, people tend to make some questionable decisions. And one of those decisions is what we'll be looking at here today. But hey, what do I know? My name is Hope Lubumbe and you're joining me on Word on the Street segment and Ilya Shipansaka today is marriage before marriage. Or let me bring you closer to home, cohabitation. Is it right? Is it wrong? Would you consider it? Well, let's find out. Depends what you believe in. Others is a few, it's okay. Others, yeah, in my case, I think uh, if you're not married, ah, it's tricky. I think it's not okay. When we look at it from the biblical perspective, that is wrong. You should only live together if you are married because there is more to living together than just merely sitting in the sitting room. You get involved physically and we all know that sex before marriage is sin so cohabitation is wrong from the biblical perspective so only live together if you are married i would say cohabiting is okay for people who are planning to spend the rest of their lives together yes in the sense that you know knowing each other more at least because you know when you're dating you're like usually far from each other most of the time Yes, so at least if you maybe have a chance to do it, at least you should do it to see how the person is really, yeah. We got interesting comments from the public. Unfortunately, that was all we could accommodate for on the street segment today. From me and the rest of the crew, it's back to the studio. Welcome back. Thank you so much for staying with us. And that was Word on the Streets with Hope and Zian with what's trending on social media. I actually loved the comments that we got from the people on the street. Mm -hmm. What really made me just amazed me was the fact that other people have had successful um, cohabiting experiences. experiences yes. Yeah, because there was this one girl, she was like, uh, at cohabiting was heavenly Heaven for her. Yes. And then the other one was like, it was really horrible. I indeed. Yeah. Okay, so in the studio, we have a special guest, a parent who we're going to be introducing to the show. How are you, mom? Tell us your name, tell the viewers your name and just what you do. Thank you for coming, me. My name is Mildred Tapi. I am an entrepreneur with Edmark International. I'm so excited to be to feature in this uh, program. Thank you so <laughs> much, ma'am. So based on what was commented on the street, what are your views about cohabiting? Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, uh, cohabiting is a sin. Mm. Uh, Zambia, we are a Christian nation, and then we don't allow uh, cohabiting. So it is a sin. Mm. So I don't encourage people to cohabit. So I'm so super excited to be part of this because, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm talking like I'm e emotionally because, okay. yeah, uh, my second born child did the same. Did the so, same. So it's like, for me, it was an opportunity, an opportunity. to express how I felt. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. I told her to say, this is going nowhere. Okay. And if you yeah. don't know where she's back to school. Mm. So for me, um, cohabiting. Is a it's no, a no, no. Zone. It's a no, no go, go zone. So she was like speaking from experience. Yes, so we I'm actually got to hear that part. <laughs> okay, okay. And for those who it goes well for, well and good. But for you as a parent yeah, and being, so. <laughs> for you as a parent and being uh, and believing your Christian values, you strongly believe that the right procedure has to be followed. Yeah. Mm. 
Okay, that's very nice, Mom. Thank you so much for having us on the show. Innocent, would you want to say any last comments about I the marriage before marriage topic? Everything has been tabled. Okay. We look at the legal aspect, the mm -hmm. biblical aspect, mm -hmm. the emotional aspect. Emotional aspect. Having aspects. spoken uh, about it from experience, so mm -hmm. I think everything's been tabled, yeah. Okay, okay. So coming from a parent, those were have yous. So cohabiting before marriage is actually not acceptable because it gives you, it prones you to so many side effects as women and as um, young children who are actually going to prepare to go into society. So thank you so much for really staying with us. This was Ilyashi Pansakai. And of course, you can catch us every Saturday right here at Diamond TV at 09 hours. They can also follow us on our social media platforms, which is Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for and more exciting... And Twitter <laughs> for more exciting stories. So with that said, catch you next week. See ya. Well, Team Ticheze and Kotso, thank you for showing us what you have. Um, personally, I have taken lots of you know, pointers and cues from watching that particular TV show uh, or production. Um, equally, I believe, Jonah, you have. Um, so much we have to say, so much we have to say, and so much we've noticed. Um, and we'll need to give that feedback to the entire team. So we'll see you in the production room. Thank you. All right, thank you for having us. Thank you for watching. After the break, elimination. The first task of the competition was for each team to create a real-life television show. The teams have presented their productions to Costa and Jonah, and now it's up to the two of them to decide which was impressive and which was disappointing. Today, two contestants will leave the competition, and only 18 will proceed to the next round. Estamate is the first to forfeit the competition. This makes Costa's work easier because now he only has to eliminate one. Who will that be? Before I pass my verdict and let you know which team and the reasons as to why this team has gone through, I'll allow my assistant here, Jonah, who's been part of the whole production process and has been watching you to give his brief comments as to why we have arrived at this decision. Jonah? Candidates, you have the task to create TV productions. And this was made very clear that you had to make TV shows that are in real life. Real TV shows that should bring eyeballs to Diamond TV. You had the opportunity to be creative. You had the opportunity to make something we've never seen before. We watched your shows and we felt that both teams were not as punchy, as creative as we expected. We noticed that there was a lot of incoherence in terms of communication for your teams. The chemistry for the TV presenters was lacking in most times. The basic rules of production were not being followed. However, it's also important to mention that there were some team members that were more outstanding than others and I believe that CBO will be able to highlight that. Like Jonah has said, I am looking for extraordinary. What I saw today is not creative. What I saw today is not unique. What I saw today is basic. When I open any blog, I listen to any radio show, watch any TV show, is what I saw. A magazine show that is talking about what's currently trending on social media and it's just topical and topical and it's like you're giving me vox pops and it's ordinary. Why would I employ somebody if they're giving me what is already existing? So to both teams, as you go to the next round, I need to start seeing the creative caps being put on. I need to have you wear your creative thinking caps. But other than that, I'll start with team one. Musonda. You were the team lead in Team 1, correct? You are not a stranger to TV production. You have produced before. 
Why did we see basic production rules being broken? For example, you showed adverts in your clip for the technology and the Airtel story on mobile money. Who allowed that? Who allowed for adverts to be shown in that clip? I take responsibility. I didn't get you? I take responsibility. You take responsibility of that. Later on, I did not see you as a producer and a person who has experience in production taking charge of your team. Like Jonah has said, the two presenters who were hosting, that is Cosmos and Nova, the two of you are extremely talented, extremely talented, but you cannot present a show the two of you yet be talking only to yourselves. Why then call it a co-presentation? You spoilt a good presentation, a good show, by the lack of chemistry, the two of you. If you survive today, take note of that. You are talented, you can do better. The next segment was the health segment. I'm made to believe that was talking about a period comforter. Nomulanga, Opa, that was the two of you. Opa, your presentation was pathetic. If you are going to be on the chopping block, good luck to you. If you get saved today, you need to pull your socks. I wasn't happy with it, to be honest, because I feel like I put in my level best in what I was doing. And I felt like my best wasn't really good enough. Nomulanga, did you have a director when you were shooting in studio? Yes, Why was there no eye contact with the camera in your presentation? You were looking the other way. Good luck. Tim Ticheze, I have a lot of questions for you. Team One or Team Aces decided to show us all the faces of the 10 people on the team. You decided to take a different approach by obviously making others be producers, directors, script writers, and so on. But I'll ask a question. Does this team agree or who came up with a decision to have Grace and Innocent as your lead or host presenters? Yes. It was the entire team? Yes. And you think these are your two best presenters? You think these are your two best presenters? Honestly, no. But because they were able to hold up their weight in that stand at current, we felt it was... Rose, what are you telling me? This is a competition. Are these your best presenters, yes or no? No. Who should have been there? Okay. Uh, my backup was Kotso and Sam. Why were they not there? Why they weren't there is because Sammy was... The two were our producers and Sammy was in the booth and Kotso was in the studio. Like Jonah has said, the difference between the two teams and the shows that were presented to us is that yours at least, at least, don't get too comfortable, at least had a bit of coherence. You had one topic of cohabitation or what you called marriage before marriage that a viewer could follow through, but the aspects of creativity were zero. They were zero. It's not something that I would love to watch. It, fall, it falls far short of any good TV ratings. Grace and Innocent, you lack the chemistry. Innocent, you have a likable personality for TV, but there was no proper coherence between you and your co-presenter. Grace, you were trying too much to present and you were all over yourself. You asked too many questions, asking a guest, don't you think three times in one sentence? And by the way, you guys, who was the researcher or the producer of this particular uh, show? We had Kotso and Sami. Sami and Kotso. Did you do the script or produce this show? We did. You did. Grace, can you explain as to why, innocent, you brought a guest that you were asking the name of the guest on set? Very unprofessional, unacceptable. Why was that? Grace, why was that? I personally felt that they needed to introduce themselves to the viewers. So I thought at the moment it was the right thing. You personally thought that? Yes. Sir. Well, you can take your personal feelings outside. 
This is a serious competition with high stakes and I'm looking for professionalism. And that kind of personal thinking doesn't exist here. My view of Mr. Mwansa now is that he's very thorough and he really knows what he's looking for. He doesn't tolerate nonsense, no average. He's looking for perfection. I have come up with my final decision on which team has won this task on teamwork and creating a TV show with good TV ratings. Team Ticheze, you win this particular task because you were able to demonstrate the aspects of teamwork and not personal shine on this task. But don't feel comfortable or safe. There was a lot of negative and a lot of mistakes that are unacceptable. Grace, you've been saved just by that one coherence. If I were you, I'd be thinking twice going forward. Team Aces, you've lost the first task. Musonda, you are the team lead. So which means you are going first on the chopping block for elimination. I was put up for elimination because our team lost. As a team leader, you have to take ownership of whatever, have, whatever decisions are made about the team. I personally didn't, don't think that I should have been on the block, but I know that I'm a leader and I know what comes with it. Who are the other two people you feel are the weakest on your team and did not contribute that much that you want to take along with you for elimination? I feel that I had a director, we appointed a director, and he didn't do his part and that meant that the whole team had to carry his weight, which was Justin. And then when it came to writing the script and structure, we were given, we, an assignment was given to El Sali, which he did not execute, and that is what meant that the whole team had to carry the weight. So the children. So you're taking Justin and Elisani with you. What do the other team members feel? Is Musonda right to put Justin and Elisani on the chopping block? Anybody who wishes to speak? Elisani, why did the script come late? Um, so the script was right on time. Um, if I may be allowed, I think there are two scripts that were introduced. So, so she's lying. She's lying? Is she lying? Is she lying? Yes, she is. Did the team members receive the script on time? Yes, Opa? No, we didn't. Personally, I only saw it in the morning uh, of the day we were supposed to present. Elisani, are you trying to be funny with me? No, sir, I'm not. So two people say the script came late and you described it an inconsistency in their speech. The three of you, can you exchange positions with the top, with the front three? Exchange positions. Musonda, you've been in the TV business as a producer and you've been on production sets before. You should have taken more charge, more control, and we expected to see better from you and your team. You've cost your team a task. Why should I give you a second chance? I think I deserve a second chance because even as there were mistakes, I think that bringing the team together and their skill together, I managed to do that in a short amount of time. Justin, tell me something that should make me keep you on the show. Well, I am a quick learner, so if you keep me on the show, I'm sure to learn everything that I need to know to be the best at this job. And I'm, I'm a pretty good hard worker as well, so I'm a good keeper. 
Alasani, you've already proven to me that you're a liar. And somebody who doesn't stick to deadlines. TV is about these strict things and deadline is one of them. Save yourself. Why should I not send you home today? So I think the reason why you should not send me home is because this is my dream. I have literally been looking up to you for a very, very long time and you giving me this opportunity now will actually open a lot of doors. I think I will own myself and accept all the mistakes, but I'm willing to learn. I'm, I'm very, very much bendable and flexible. To tune me, fine tune me, get me down and creep me into whatever you want, especially the diamond that you're looking for. With much learning, much time, and with chance and luminous up, I can be the diamond that you're looking for. Unfortunately, this business is not about leniency. Let's take a deep breath before I make my decision and announce who amongst the three of you is going home. Are you ready for my decision? Elasani, unfortunately, your journey stops here. You said very personal things of how I've inspired you and how you've wanted to work with me. But unfortunately, there are certain mistakes that need to pain you in life. I am not sending you home because of the script. I am sending you home because after going through the presentation, you and Opa were one of the weakest links in your presentation. And for that, unfortunately, your journey on the Diamond TV presenter search ends here. Good luck in future, and I wish you success to many doors. Justin, I want to see more and better next week. Musonda, you are surviving by the hair of your teeth. As a person who's been in this business, we expect better. Good luck to all of you. We'll see you next week with the next assignment. Thank you. My view now is as before. He's a professional. He knows what he's looking for. And he's good um, in the field of work that he's in. Mr. Mwansa, ah, Mr. Mwansa just knows what he wants. My view of him is that he knows exactly what he wants and the pressure that he's putting on us is a pressure that we need to like put on our A-game every time that we're faced with uh, different challenges. So yeah, I feel like he's just okay. He just knows what he wants. He is a tough man. He's one to help you build a thick skin and not just trying to help you not break under the sun because that was really, it was, I don't even know how to, to describe it, it was really nerve wracking and for a minute there my emotions got the best of me but I hope moving forward I'll be able to put my emotions under control and I believe being in this competition is also going to help me to just have a control on my emotions, how I also handle myself around people.